it's hard for a girl to know what to wear when she's presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award to probably the biggest Raptor fan in the whole country <laughs> on game night. But John Hondrick, I don't want you to worry. We got you covered. <laughs> we the North, we the North, we the North. <laughs> go Raps, go. Go Raps, go. John Allen Hondrick was literally born for a life in newspapers. The son of former Toronto Star publisher, the late Bielan Hondrick, John graduated from Neuchâtel Junior College in Switzerland, the University of Toronto, and the London School of Economics with degrees in political science and law. He would follow in his father's footsteps with his first job as an office boy and night reporter for the Ottawa Citizen in 1973. In 1976, he joined the Toronto Star as a reporter and went on to become bureau chief in Ottawa and Washington, D.C., later becoming its deputy city editor, business editor, and editorial page editor. He became editor of the Star in 1988 and then publisher in 1994. He received the Order of Canada in 2004, the Order of Ontario in 2006, and was appointed special ambassador for the mayor of Toronto in 2006. He became chair of the Tour Star board in 2009. John is known for many things, philanthropy, mentorship, leadership, his love of flying, and even though he was named a man of style, the best thing John always wears is a smile, an infectious one at that. His dedication to the papers he's worked for and the people he's worked with are an example of why he is winning tonight's award. John, this Lifetime Achievement Award from the Canadian Journalism Foundation puts a really nice bow tie on an incredible newspaper career. And we wanted to highlight all of your accomplishments. Don't get up yet. We have, in addition, we have a special message from Mayor John Tory, who regrets he could not be with us this evening. He's probably in Jurassic Park. Okay. John, you're well deserving of this award. Not only has John Hondrick uh, stood up for his profession, uh, not only has John Hondrick been an active participant, a professional participant in making sure the events of the day are covered uh, in an intelligent way uh, for people, but he's also been a great participant in civil society. And that is something that has made a big difference. All of those things have made a big difference to building a better city and a better country. So I think this award coming from your peers uh, is something that is recognizing a lifetime of achievement and is certainly well deserved. Congratulations again. So, as we know, John Hondrick is a man who has given a voice to the voiceless. He has given countless donations to startups in need. 
and he's given us the pleasure of his company all of these years. John, you are the toast of the town tonight. Please join me on the stage to receive your very well-earned Lifetime Achievement Award. And I want you to know we didn't plan that. We didn't plan that at all. So there's an old saying at the Toronto Star, people who, some people in this room will remember, the famous line was, what does it mean to Metro? This is what it means to Metro, let me tell you. Uh, when you th talk about lifetime achievement, it also brings back phrases like, hello, sweetheart, get me rewrite. I got something I want to tell you about. Uh, Sally, to receive this from you is something extraordinarily special. Uh, Sally and I have been good friends for a long time, and the journalism that you have brought this country is truly extraordinary. Thank you very much. I want to thank the CJF for this award. And when I see the list of people, including Sally, who have been recipients, I really feel in, in quite hallowed company. It's uh, really quite something. Um, also tonight, I wanted to thank and at my table, there are some individuals, unbeknownst to me, who took pen to paper to suggest maybe that my name might be put forward. Thank you very much. Uh, it was 46 years ago on a very soggy April Fool's night, quite like we're seeing tonight, that I first began my career at the Ottawa Citizen. And what a ride it has been. Extraordinary. And even more so when I think that for the first third of my life, the last thing in the world I was ever going to do was journalism. Decided not to. When I started, I had a law degree and a political science degree, hadn't even written a letter to the editor. And that makes the point, I think, even more so that this award is decidedly not mine alone. It has been my incredible fortune to have worked with an extraordinary group of colleagues. Editors, managing editors, editorial page editors, many of whom are here this evening, reporters, photographers, designers, columnists. They are some of the greats of Canadian journalism. And when you work with the greats of Canadian journalism, it is an incredible honor. To my business colleagues, in other departments, you too have played an amazing role in this, any success that I have achieved. And my family, you have supported me wholeheartedly through all the thick and thin. And when you add on to that, all the companionship also have been associated, very good fortune, with one of Canada's great newspapers, not only the largest, but one imbued with principles that uniquely shape its outlook and its character. For 27, 127 years, the star has carved out its own journalistic path, and it has been my privilege to preserve and build on that great tradition. So to all, thank you very much. But those who know me know I can't let an occasion like this pass without saying a few words. For sadly, I think everyone knows there is a crisis in journalism today. We don't have to be reminded, and it's the motto of the CJF, of the important link between quality journalism and a healthy democracy. I like to refer to the aphorism of the US atheist A.J. Ebling, who once defined the free press as, and I quote, 
the weak slat under the bed of democracy. And now, more than ever, that slat is sagging dangerously. In Canada, major newspapers have been shedding reporters by the hundreds. Newspapers, particularly community papers, have been shutting down by the dozens. And today, we have that new phenomenon, news deserts, communities where no media are doing any of the daily reporting. Add to this the phenomenon of fake news, alternate facts. I find it extraordinary to think we are actually having a journalistic ethics debate about whether or not it is appropriate to host a deliberately doctored video or a false news story. I refer to one of the star's most venerable old report reporters, Ernest Hemingway, who 100 years ago said, in very straightforward terms, the best ammunition against lies is the truth. So what can be done about this? And this has been a matter of great debate in our country for the last while. But when I think of the people who have gathered here this evening, you've come to celebrate excellence in journalism. You care by your presence about the state of media. I think you show that this matters to you. We all know there isn't one simple answer to the crisis in journalism. But I want to highlight one area that I think all of you might want to think about where each individual, everyone can play a role, and that is philanthropy and journalism. And here we have much to learn from what our friends south of the border have done. For several decades now, the United States has considered philanthropic funding of quality journalism as both worthy and legitimate. In other words, you get a tax receipt, tax receipt if you donate. <laughs> it is said there are now 150 independent nonprofit centers doing investigative journalism in America. Most famous are ProPublica, Center for Public Integrity, Center for Investigative Reporting. Their budgets are about 10 million a year, but there are many other smaller, who are prospering, and they all see what they're doing as a form of public service. So who are some of the donors? And the studies show comes from all, the rich to the poor. Who can forget two years ago, Merle Streep using the stage of the Golden Globes to urge Americans to donate to quality journalism? Have we had anyone here in this country do that? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, this one I like in particular, they have given in the past couple of years $9 million to the Guardian newspaper alone to do a lot of their African and health-related reporting. George Soros, we hear a lot of him from Mr. Trump, his Open Society last year alone provided $24 million for journalism the night the Carnegie Foundations have got together to provide millions. And the list goes on. Foundations, wealthy benefactors, private citizens. The important thing here is this isn't crowdfunding. This isn't money being raised for a specific cause. This is foundation money which allows these investigative centers to prosper and do their work. Now, I'd be the last one to argue that this funding is going to close, come close to replicating all the damage we've gone through, the losses and the paper closing. But in the United States, they have made a huge contribution to maintaining quality journalism. So what about in Canada? We have no such tradition. First, we don't have the necessary laws, but I think that's going to change next year. But I can tell you that in seeking donations for journalistic causes, it's a tough slog, very tough. But let me give you one example of which I'm very proud, and the reporter is here this evening. The Atkinson Foundation, of which I'm a director, 
decided a couple of years ago to sponsor one reporter. She works at the Star and she covers the area of precarious employment. Her work has been nothing short of spectacular. She's won awards, accolades, but much more important, she has cast an incredible light on workplace practices and conditions in Ontario. This is first-rate, true quality journalism. And it's just one initiative, but I would argue it's made a big difference. And there are others. The space is wide open. There are many possibilities. The imagination can go. So as I leave you tonight, I would like to put forward this challenge to you. Think not on what journalism has done for you, <laughs> but rather ask what you might do to make quality journalism thrive in Canada. And if tonight's award highlights that message, I will be doubly blessed. Thank you very much.